Well, I don't know how you can get used to all these tough losses. I, 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 I can hear myself sounding like a broken record. That was tough. That was brutal. Another incredibly close, difficult, gut-wrenching, pull-your-soul-out-of-your-chest type of loss. This is happening a lot, and it happened again. There are some things that happened tonight, though, that you can point a finger in terms of a very clear-cut reason for the Warriors making mistakes. You can point the finger to very specific coaching decisions that maybe would have made a difference when the Golden State Warriors are losing a game by a whopping one point, which is what happened tonight. We're going to talk about those. Some very disturbing comments from tonight's broadcast on the TNT side attributing Steve Kerr and his words regarding Jonathan Kaminga. I couldn't believe it when I heard it. We're going to discuss that. If we have time, we'll talk about the All-Star game, but it's getting old. It is getting old. It's just a lot of just really torturous losses for the Golden State Warriors. And whether or not they're preventable, there certainly are decisions that Steve Kerr could make that are at least justifiable, that are at least explainable, that at least fall in the realm of common sense and logic and reasoning. And we'll discuss all that and more next. This is Locked On Warriors. You are Locked On Warriors, your daily Golden State Warriors podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for making Locked On Warriors your first listen every day. We're free and available wherever you get podcasts and on YouTube where we're exclusively live. We're part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. The Golden State Warriors lose again. They're back to four games below 500. Tonight was a very close loss. In my humble opinion, I always prefer the close. I'm sorry. I always prefer my team getting blown out to a close loss because in a blowout it's over it's over early you can kind of move on there are no second guessing there 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 is no doubt there are no what ifs you got your butt kicked you move on but the warriors all season long i'm coming on hosting these post game shows following these brutal close losses tonight no exception they lose 134 133 The game was close throughout, and this game tonight ended with chaos. It ended with a lot of questionable uh, uh, decisions. Uh, For starters, Stephen Curry catching a a rebound while he's on the ground. I know the fan base, myself, was frustrated about the fact that Steve Kerr did not challenge that call. It was ruled out of bounds on Stephen Curry, and they said that his back was touching the line. If you look at replays, it was awfully close. He was starting to come up, lifting up his torso. You can make the argument from the the pictures and screen captures that I published on my Threads account, Ad Dog Wild, that maybe it was the shadow of his jersey touching the line and not his jersey itself. In high definition, if Kerr had challenged that, we would have known for certain, or at least as close as certain as you could be, whether or not he actually was out of bounds. Uh the ensuing play, Jonathan Kaminga goes up for a bucket. And Kaminga, by the way, another fantastic night. Five nights in a row now where he scored 20-plus points. Tonight, he, sur- he surpassed 30 points. Jonathan Kaminga scoring, in fact, a career-high 31 points in 30 minutes and 11 seconds of play. Yes, that means he's averaging more than a point per minute of play. He was 12 of 19 from the field, 2 of 4 from beyond the arc. Five of six from the free throw line because he's literally the only player on this team getting to the line tonight. That's a whole other point of contention we can get into. I know some of you just hate using referees as an excuse, but Stephen Curry, who actually led all Warriors scorers, even though Kaminga scored 31, Steph led all scorers on the Warriors side with 33, but no thanks to to the officials because he had a whopping total of one free throw attempt. He had this gash on his arm that looked serious. 
It looked deep. He looked beat up. I don't know how many plays I saw him driving, uh, you know, attacking the lane, attacking the paint, attacking the rim, and just getting no love from the officials. Now, tonight, overall, I didn't think it was an egregiously one-sided affair from the officials. Uh, The free throw disparity was just four free throw attempts. In fact, the Warriors actually had four more uh, than the Sacramento Kings. 23 free throw attempts to 19 for the Sacramento Kings. But the end of game, at the at the end of the game, I'm sorry, uh, Jonathan Kaminga goes up for what should have been an easy bucket that would have given the Warriors a one-point lead, and he gets hacked. The replays were obvious. He got hit in the arm by DeMontis Sabonis, no call. Now, Kevin Herter misses uh, a pair of free throws on the other side, sets up the final play. Why don't we hear from Steve Kerr regarding the final play? Because that was pandemonium in and of itself where uh, the team opted not to call a timeout. and But then at the very end, you suddenly see Steve Kerr yelling for a timeout. The referees didn't hear him. His own players didn't hear him. Why don't we hear from Steve Kerr in terms of his interpretation and perspective of that final play? Take us through the last possession. It looked like you know you almost called timeout a couple times. Yeah. Why didn't you? And then, uh, yeah, why didn't you? Yeah, I, I, I trust, you know, these guys have been together for so long. Um, I really prefer the scramble situations at the end of games where a defense um, can't, you know, get set up and make subs. And, you know, um, and so I, I, you know, this this is one that, you know, um, you just, it keeps you up at night, you know. Um, but we got to the picture we wanted. We got the Steph Draymond uh, pick and roll at the top. We had good spacing. Um, you know, the, 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 I thought maybe we were going to get, get um, Draymond on the roll with the spacing on either side and get a good shot because they doubled Steph. And, uh, but, but he didn't, you know, he just couldn't get it to Draymond in that situation. They, they did a good job of doubling him. And, uh, you know, when the play's over, then you're like, yeah, you know, um, could have taken a timeout, and that's um, it's it's a it's always a difficult decision down the stretch. But um, I've seen those guys convert in that situation a million times, and like I said, we we got to the picture we wanted eventually, um, just didn't pan out. And look, I, it's hard to criticize Kerr in that regard, but it was weird at the same time because Kerr was literally you could see the footage; he was like screaming at the refs to call a timeout. Which then begs the question, it's like, why were you doing that at the end and not at the beginning? You know, one of Kerr's strengths is scripting plays out of timeouts, which clearly the team needed. I understand the logic of letting it play out because the defense cannot be set. The other team cannot get their uh, preferred players in to play defense. But again, I mean, this is someone who once upon a time did not need to have endless excuses for losing like he's coming up with now. But regardless of what happened at the end of the game, what is not justifiable is the fact that for starters, and and we saw this last game, but again, it was the Atlanta Hawks, one of the worst teams in the NBA, and they didn't even have Trey Young. So a a lot of the Warriors weaknesses were easily masked in that game. And now you're playing the Sacramento Kings, a team that coming into this game lost four or five. They're hungrier. They're far more talented. In fact, the Kings ended their own four-game losing streak, beating the Hawks as well, while the Hawks were on a road trip. But three point guards at the same time. The Golden State Warriors tonight gave up 40 points in the first quarter. 40! All right, that, that is a massively huge clip. That is, you're on pace to giving up 160 in your game by doing that. And there's no doubt that this team's issues, first and foremost, before anything else, is defense. They are an awful defensive team. And they just can't figure it out. And and, and they can't figure it out because you have a head coach that is infatuated with Corey Joseph, who's infatuated with playing Steph Pajemski and Corey Joseph together. The average height of those three being out there playing together is 6'2. How do you expect when you have three of your five players out there averaging 6'2 in height? How do you expect to play defense? 
how do you expect to stop teams when when the other team has a lineup out there whose average height is like six seven six eight? They're having no issues putting up shots. None. The Sacramento Kings, if they want to put up a three, they don't have to worry about the defense to do so. Do you know how ridiculous that sounds? Corey Joseph tonight, and, and look, Corey Joseph did not have an awful game offensively. Okay, it's, it's important to add offensively there at the end. Corey Joseph played 17 minutes tonight. In those 17 minutes, six points. Okay, so he's not giving you offensive production. He had two three-pointers in this game. And when you consider how many three-pointers he probably gave up, no, that's not that's not a positive result that you're ending up with there. Okay, that is a negative. He is an awful player when it comes to... Okay, awful maybe is a strong word. Maybe he is awful. I don't know. But he's not helping defensively. Stephen Curry is not a bad defensive player, but Stephen Curry with shoes on is 6'3". Brandon Pajemski is 6'4". Brandon Pajemski is good, not great defensively. He's certainly not a shot blocker. And other teams are picking the Warriors apart night after night because for unexplainable reasons, this is what Steve Kerr wants. He wants Hobbit ball. Once again, we saw Hobbit ball in effect tonight. I don't know who in their right mind thinks that that should work. I don't get it. it the only, I mean, the only result I can come to from all this is that Steve Kerr's acumen is very limited. He's just, maybe he's just not a very smart person. I don't know how else you explain that. I also decided to do some deep thinking when that happened and I'm watching this just losing my mind like I always do. I just I just cannot tolerate a lack of reasoning and decision making and, and there's no reasoning to this. And as I'm sitting there fuming over yet again, you know, a, a five-man lineup that has three tiny players out there, what is that like like can we make a list of the smart things Steve Kerr has done in his career? Like I was I was trying to think back to this. I'm like what are the actual because everyone likes to, in defense of Kerr, bring up the four titles, right? He's he's won four championships. How can you possibly criticize a coach that has four championships? And then I'll, of course, will rebut and say, well, two of those four, any dumb dumb could have won a title with those Kevin Durant teams. I give him absolute credit for the first one. He took a team that was stacked, but that needed a uh, you know fresh mind to maybe get him over the hump to win that first championship. But make no mistake, Mark Jackson built the foundation of this for Steve Kerr to inherit and take over and then win titles. But what, what can anyone think of an actual smart, revolutionary, innovative, ingenious decision that Steve Kerr has made? The only thing I can think of is going back to the very first year when he made the call to bring Andre Iguodala off the bench. Kudos. Yeah, I don't know if you call that ingenious, but it worked. It was a good move. He also needed his uh, video operator. I forgot what the, the job title is. Um, but he needed a, a low-level assistant to give him the idea to start Andre Iguodala in the 2015 NBA Finals, which proved to make a difference. But, I mean, the, the guy, I don't know. I, don't, I do not understand. If anyone out there is impressed by Steve Kerr, I don't get it. All right? He was the right person at the right time. But this Hobbit ball lineup, oh, look, and even G. Martinez writes, Luke Walton was the Andre Iguodala idea. So I what does he ever come up with? I don't. So anyways, th this Hobbit ball thing is a joke. And when, when you're losing games and giving up 40 points in quarters, when you're giving up 134 points in a game total, your defense has very serious issues. And the fact that Trace Jackson Davis got a DNP tonight is egregious. What is the reasoning for that? I, I of course I doubt anyone asked them, but uh and and when we come back, I'm gonna I'm gonna explain to you something that uh the broadcaster on the TNT side tonight, Brian Brian Anderson, who has said a few really weird things this season covering the Warriors, all pertaining to Jonathan Kaminga. And he revealed something in a discussion he had with Steve Kerr that was, in my opinion, mind-blowing. And it, it was just 
it was just really grotesque to listen to. It really was. I'm going to explain what, I, what, what, what I'm referring to in just a moment. So we're going to give some love to some sponsors here tonight. And the first sponsor of the evening is eBay Motors. And this is a fun ad because we get to invoke the great Josh Lloyd, who hosts Locked On Fantasy Basketball, the most viewed program in the Locked On Podcast Network. Our partners at eBay Motors have teamed up with Locked On Fantasy Basketball host Josh Lloyd to bring you some of the best fantasy picks each week, all season long. Whether you're prepping for a daily draft, scouting the waiver wire, every week we're going to provide you players that are guaranteed to fit on your roster. So let's see who Josh picked out for us on this week. So I'm going to list five players, and tonight I will pick which one we're going to uh, read the, the breakdown of. Uh, so Josh's five players are, are John Concher of the Memphis Grizzlies, Brandon Miller of the Charlotte Hornets, Jabari Walker, Patrick Williams of the Bulls, and Nick Richards, who I don't even know who he plays for. I'm going to go with Brandon Miller, the number two pick in this year's draft. I am curious about you. How are you doing, kid? According to Josh Lloyd, Brandon Miller should be seeing a big uptick in usage with Terry Rozier shipped out to the Miami Heat, and that makes him a must roster play in fantasy. Man, why wasn't Brandon Miller available in 2020 <laughs> when the Warriors drafted uh, uh, James Wiseman. I digress. Josh Lloyd from Just Locked On Fantasy Basketball is going to help you win your fantasy championship. And eBay Motors knows a championship team is about each player being a perfect fit. Same with your vehicle. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you can make sure your ride stays running smoothly. Brake lights, brake kits, I'm sorry, LED headlights, roof rack, bumper, whatever your baby needs, eBay Motors has it and with ebay guaranteed fit it's guaranteed to fit your ride the first time every time or your money back plus at these prices you're burning rubber not cash keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com ebay guaranteed fit is only available to u.s customers eligible items only exclusions apply you are locked on warriors your daily golden state warriors podcast Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Are part of Locked On. And the network now has a 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Go to Locked On Sports Today and YouTube and subscribe to the first ever national sports 24 7 streaming channel and follow me on threads at dog wild follow the program on threads as well as well at locked on warriors so brian anderson who does play-by-play -play for tnt and i've never had an opinion about him ever until this season last time he was he was the broadcaster for the warriors Maybe it was two games ago. The, the Warriors, thankfully, I, I love that. I love their their exposure on national TV. They're still getting the love, although I guarantee that number is going to drop considerably next season. The way things are going now, um, but I think it was two games ago. Brian Anderson just and I can't remember the context, but he randomly interjected his opinion. It was entirely subjective, and his opinion was about Jonathan Kaminga. It was totally negative, right? It was it was a total dig. And I wish I remember what the specifics were, but you know, it was it was a three second thing in a broadcast. He didn't bring it up again. I just I didn't think much of it. But then tonight, there were a couple occasions where he was like blatantly ripping Kaminga. Like there was one play, for example, where uh, he blamed Kaminga for missing a defensive assignment. He didn't blow the defensive assignment, but according to Brian Anderson. He was supposed to be there to back up his teammate who totally flailed on his coverage. And because he didn't back him up in time, it was Jonathan Kaminga's fault. It was utterly insane. I, I remember hearing this going, what the hell? Like, do you have a bias against Kaminga? Like, what's going on here? But then early and earlier in the broadcast, though, he shared this story. And look, Steve Kerr is TNT alum. The, everyone on the network loves him. They have a clear bias against him. There, there, there's no doubting that. And do not be surprised if after the season, Steve Kerr, uh, ends up back in TNT. You know, there's a lot of speculation about what Steve Kerr is going to do after the season. Um, 
you know, some people say he might, you know, go to San Antonio to take over uh, Greg Popovich's job. He might take another uh, head coaching gig somewhere else. I, I highly doubt that. My guess is if, if, if him and the Warriors do part ways after the season, I wish it was now, but unfortunately I don't think the, the either Lacob or Mike Dillamy Jr. have the guts to do what's right, which is can him now. Um, so it's probably going to be after the season. And, and my guess is he's going to go back to TNT and be a color commentator. And, and, and look, he was fantastic at that job. It, it wouldn't surprise me if he went back to it. You're seeing Bob Myers doing work with ESPN. Bob certainly looks happy. I'm sure Steve will be happy as well with a night and day level of stress being a color commentator for TNT versus being the head coach of the Golden State Warriors. But Brian Anderson made this comment where he he, he started uh, 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 elaborating on this conversation that he had with Steve Kerr. And he said that Steve Kerr told him that him and Kaminga had a discussion where Kaminga told Steve Kerr that the player he looks up to, the player he wants to emulate, the player whose level he wants to reach is Kobe Bryant. That's awesome. Now, Kobe Bryant, five-time champion, two-time NBA Finals MVP, one-time MVP, one of the greatest scorers in the history of the game, one of the greatest players in the history of the game. If there's one critique about Kobe, besides, besides all the personal stuff off the court, was that he was sometimes a, a very high usage player, right? He, he did shoot the ball a lot. He wasn't always the most efficient shooter. Um, he wasn't bad, but it's just, you know, he put the ball up a lot. That was always a, a minor critique of his. But nonetheless, look, I don't know how you could possibly have any objections to one of your young players aspiring to someday be like Kobe Bryant. And you can see this. With every game that's going by, you can see that potential in Jonathan Kaminga. Real fast again, one more time. His stats for tonight, Jonathan Kaminga. Played 30 minutes. Unfortunately, his streak uh, has ended of the Warriors staying undefeated when Kaminga plays 30-plus minutes. He played 30 minutes and 11 seconds tonight. But again, 31 points, his first 30-plus point game of his career. 31 is a new career high. I think his previous career high was 28. Um, three rebounds, three assists, two steals. Again, three trips to the line. He's five of six from the free throw line. His free throw shooting has been fantastic lately. He was 12 of 19 from the field. This is following up his perfect 11 of 11 night. And he led the team in net rating with a plus 16. The only other player in the Warriors, uh, by the way, tonight, comparable in net rating was uh, Draymond Green, who was a plus 14. And to put it in perspective, the next highest was Brandon Pajemski, who was a plus five. So you could deduce Kaminga and Draymond were pretty much the two players on the on the team tonight who are consistent in terms of productivity and winning play this evening. So anyways, Brian Anderson is sharing this story about how Kaminga is telling Steve Kerr that Kobe is the player he wants to be like someday. And Steve Kerr says... In, according to Brian Anderson, that his response to that was, well, I see you as more of a Sean Marion type. Now, Sean Marion, nothing wrong with him, all right? Sean Marion was a great player. What, four-time All-Star, I believe? I think he he uh, he won a title with the Mavericks in 2011. There's nothing wrong, with, in, in generally speaking, with, with telling one of your players, if you're a head coach, like, I see you as a future all-star, as, as a future champion. But Sean Marion was also a borderline role player. Sean Marion was never like the top dog on a team. Sean Marion was never known for being necessarily a scorer. He was known much more for defense. He had the un unorthodox uh, shooting motion. Um, again, awesome player, but no comparison to Kobe Bryant. Night and day. I mean, Kobe Bryant was a transcendent superstar considered one of the top 10 all-time players in the history of this game. Sean Marion is not even a Hall of Famer. And that grossed me out. That disgusted me. That, to me, like, like that would be the equivalent of, yeah, exactly. And, and Rashawn Mills, you're absolutely right. He was a role player. He was a damn good role player. And again, he made the All-Star team four times, but ultimately, big picture, that's what he was. And th think about this. Like, I, I'm a journalism professor. If one of my students came up to me and said, I hope to someday be 
a journalist for the New York Times. I someday hope to be a journalist for the Associated Press, for the Washington Post, whatever prestigious news organization you could think of. And what if I turn around and, and told this student, yeah, I think you should be a reporter for the Santa Rosa Press Democrat. Again, fine newspaper, but night and day between the Santa Rosa Press Democrat and the New York Times. I, I you know, I it is that disturbs me. I I like when I heard that story, that showed me right there why Steve Kerr has never once in his 10 plus years as head coach of the Warriors developed an all-star player. He just doesn't get it. He, he he was, again, perfect at the time. In 2014, he was the right man for the right job. He was lucky that Mark Jackson got fired because Steve Kerr was supposed to go to the Knicks, in case you forgot that story. Phil Jackson, that was the moment where Phil was their executive. Phil wanted to hire Steve Kerr. And then last minute, the Mark Jackson firing happens. The Warriors seek out Steve Kerr. Steve Kerr gets Phil Jackson's blessing. And then Steve Kerr becomes the head coach of the Golden State Warriors. But Hearing that story, it, it shows me that he just doesn't care. I don't think about, about anyone on this team outside of his core. I think his priorities are really messed up. I mean, the way the way this team and Steve handled the Draymond punch last year, that was bad enough. But to come out and, and to hear these stories where you're literally telling your players that I don't agree with your dreams. I don't agree with your, your aspirations. I don't think you're good enough for what your goal is. That is just grotesque. That is just wrong. I don't I, I don't even think that makes you a good person, honestly. So here, that story just really pissed me off. And, and to me, it really was an insight into this relationship between Steve Kerr and Jonathan Kaminga. And the sooner Kerr's out of this building, and the sooner we can recognize Steve Kerr as the former head coach of this dynasty, the sooner this team can move on and start focusing on the players who are actually going to be relevant a year or two from now and not an older has been that Steve Kerr likes who can't win games for you anymore. It's which is what the reality of the situation is. It's, it's ridiculous. So I was really disturbed about that story and I thought it was very insightful. Um, Harrison Barnes had a career high in scoring on the Golden State Warriors tonight. We're going to talk about that and what Charles Barkley said was the reason for Harrison Barnes having a career night in scoring against the Golden State Warriors. Let's give some love first, though, to one of our newer sponsors of the program, and that is Grammarly. Talk about an awesome service that could help you not just with emails, not just with anything professional. We're talking cover letters. If you're a student, we're talking about your assignments. If you're a professional, we're talking about making your writing look clean, making your prose come out accurately. Grammarly is awesome. It can get Grammarly can help you get started with ideas, outlines. They can even give you tips. For example, if you're thinking about uh, uh, taglines for a video thumbnail, Grammarly can help you there. If you need a, an advanced version of a thesaurus, if you're trying to sound creative and smart, Grammarly can help you there. If you want to get through your emails quicker, Grammarly can help you summarize your emails and provide suggestions on how to reply in seconds. You got a big presentation coming up? Let Grammarly create a personalized outline to get you organized so you can transform your ideas into a compelling presentation. Need to draft an important email and you don't know where to start? Grammarly has suggestions to jumpstart your writing. And the best part, it's free to use. Go to Grammarly.com slash podcast to download for free today. Again, that's Grammarly, G-R-A-M-M-A-R-L-Y.com slash podcast and make yourself sound a lot smarter. You are Locked On Warriors. 
your daily Golden State Warriors podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, one final segment of Locked On Warriors. Thank you for making Locked On Warriors your first listen every day. We're free and available wherever you get podcasts. For the everydayers, we're going to be back at this soon. I am, I've am. i been planning a show dedicated strictly to who Jonathan Kaminga is because there really are not a lot of stories written about his background, his history. It is fascinating. And he obviously has an international background, similar to Kobe Bryant, uh, who, who spent a lot of his formative years in Italy. Um, so I'm going to have a show dedicated to that very soon because Kaminga deserves it. He's on the verge of stardom. This kid is going to be something very special. And then obviously we're back at this live uh, Saturday night. The Warriors are playing on national TV again, playing the Lakers. This is rivalry week. Rah, 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 rah. I can't, how, that was a, a tongue twister there. Rivalry week. Um, so stay tuned for that. And I, again, don't be surprised if when you see Steve Kerr trump out his three-point guards, which I know are scaring other teams, must be so intimidating to be an NBA player and to come out there and see three point guards averaging six, two in height as your defense as three fifths of your defense. Oh, I'm frightened. Three point guards. How are we ever going to score? Oh, wait, I could just stand here and not even jump and no one's going to block my shot because they have hobbits on their team defending me. Uh, Charles Barkley tonight blamed Harrison Barnes setting a career high in scoring on Clay Thompson's defense. Barnes was out of control tonight. Harrison Barnes hit seven threes in this game. He was seven of 12 from beyond the arc. He was 14 of 24 from the field. That was always the biggest gripe of Harrison Barnes when he played for the Warriors. Those, those three point clanks, the only player who, I feel like it makes makes more noise with missed three point shots is Andrew Wiggins. And sorry, I don't mean to be. I'm not sorry. Who cares? But Harrison Barnes was out of control tonight. Darren Fox played well too. He had Darren Darren Fox had 29 points in the final meeting between these two teams. But Harrison Barnes, 39 points. A player that normally burns the Golden State Warriors is Malik Monk. Monk tonight had. Four points. You know why? Because Kaminga was guarding him the whole game. Kaminga is one of the only guys that can consistently do everything. Clay Thompson, offensively, for the most part, still has it. Not a great night tonight. Five of 14 from the field, two of seven from beyond the arc, 16 points. Did commit five fouls. And I think a lot of that was because of guarding Harrison Barnes and Charles Barkley just right out of the gate. On inside the NBA on TNT, that was immediately his first opinion. Now it's Charles Barkley, you know, take that for what it's worth. But he called out Clay immediately and said, Clay Thompson could not defend Harrison Barnes. And that's been the issue. Clay's defense has regressed considerably. When you look at positions in the NBA, the only positions that are certain are defensive positions meaning who are you guarding, right? So Clay Thompson, for most of his career, was known as a two guard because that's the position he would defend. He could also defend point guards. But now Clay Thompson is a three. He's being assigned to guard bigger players like Harrison Barnes. Sometimes he's being asked to defend power forwards. We heard Steve Kerr talk about that during the offseason in terms of what he expects from Clay, but that's just not who he is. So now you have players playing out of position so that Steve Kerr can get what he wants so that he can get his way. And the result is Harrison Barnes dropping 39 points. And, and I hate criticizing Clay, man. I really do. I take zero pleasure in that. I'm not asking the Warriors to get rid of him. But the reality is, defensively, he's a liability. Andrew Wiggins, who for some, for some reason, Kerr keeps saying, still has a role on this team. He's also a defensive liability. Watch these games closely. Watch these, these games with nuance. People are blowing by Wiggins routinely. And I cannot wait for him to get traded. I'm sorry for being so, so negative. I hate it. I, I wish there was content that could make this show, that could give me positive things to talk about, but this is the season. 
close losses. They're brutal. They hurt. Stay strong, Dub Nation. Good night. Bye-bye.